So I think we did oxygen and neon. Are those the ones we did? Nitrogen? How about we do fluorine? Okay. So electron configuration and orbital diagram for fluorine. Well, the first, what do we have to figure out first? How many electrons? So fluorine has how many electrons? Nine. Okay, so we've got nine electrons to place. And again, I like the uh, orbital diagram first. So we do those with boxes. There's the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p. <coughs> And then we're going to put the electrons in, representing them as arrows. And you fill them uh, arrow up first and then arrow down. They have to be paired up. And with the analogy, remember, each of these boxes is a bed in the hotel. And this is uh, the 1S room and the 2S room and the 2P room. The 2P room has three beds. So when we take nine electrons in here, the first one is going to go into that cheapest room the lowest energy, and then the second one's also going to go in there, but they don't want to sleep next to each other because of appearances, so the other electron sleeps upside down in the bed. And then, so that's two electrons, and here we have three, and four, and five, and electron number six comes in, and he'd rather have his own bed instead of sharing with that um, other electron, so he's going to go over here, so now we're up to what, six? And seven is going to get his own bed also. Eight comes in, he's going to have to share. So he's going to share here, and then nine's <coughs> going to share. And there is space for one more electron in there, but fluorine only has nine electrons. Okay? Any questions about the orbital diagram? How do we write the electron configuration? That's like the shorthand, right? So we're going to look at our orbital diagram, and the 1s has two electrons. So that's 1s, 2. And the 2s has two electrons, and the 2p subshell has, uh, blanking, five. <laughs> five electrons. Okay? If we take these superscripts and add them up, 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9. And that's our total number of electrons. Any questions? This is something you have to practice before you can get good at it. So we've been doing some of those smaller elements with not all that many electrons. You get up to like lead with 82 electrons, and you're talking a lot of boxes, a lot of letters and numbers, and so we do have a shorthand method. It's called the noble gas uh, configuration, or the noble gas shorthand. And so we can use, um, use an abbreviation. We take the noble gas symbol and put it in brackets, and that stands in for the electron configuration of that element. And we do that with the noble gases because they all have full subshells. So for sodium, the full electron configuration, let's do that. How many electrons does sodium have? 11. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Sorry, 3s1. 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 is 11. That's the electron configuration. What's the electron configuration for neon? Neon has 10 electrons, right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That's this part right there. So the shorthand is, instead of writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, we write neon in brackets, and we just write the 3s1. Easier? Yeah, but that's not going to make a lot of sense unless you understand the whole thing as well. So to write the noble gas shorthand, you're going to find the element you're writing the electron configuration for, and you're going to go to the previous noble gas, the one closest to it but lower. And you'll start there and then just add in the electrons 
on top of that. So let's do that. Let's write electron configurations for aluminum, bromine, and strontium. So aluminum. Well, we find aluminum on the periodic table. I wish I had a laser pointer. Um, aluminum element number 13. What is the noble gas at the end of the row above aluminum? Neon. So we can start with neon in brackets. And do you remember? Let's actually go back and look at that. Remember this? So here we have aluminum right here. And there's neon. So we just did neon in, bra in brackets, so that takes care of the first 10 electrons. And then the next electrons, this is period 3. The S block has 2, so there's 3S2. And this is the P block, and so that's 3P1. Any questions? So from the periodic table, we can just figure that out, 3S2. 3P1. And as a double check, neon has 10 electrons, plus 2 plus 1, that's 13 electrons. Aluminum has 13 electrons. If that doesn't add up, you've, you've definitely missed something. Okay, how about bromine? 35 electrons. What's the noble gas just before bromine? Argon. So we've got argon, and then let's look at that again. So here we have argon, and we're trying to get to bromine. Right? So we've got 4s2, and then this is the D block, but remember we said those were like they sank down, right? So this isn't 4d, that's 3d. 3d, that's all full, so that's going to be 3d10. And then to get over to bromine, it's one, two, three, four, five. Five electrons in the 4p level. Do you see that? It takes a few times before it starts to make any sense. So then you would write it 4s and then 3d and then 4p? Yes. The orbitals do not fill all the first level, all the second level, all the third level, all the fourth level. There's some staggering because of interactions between electrons. In the hotel analogy, it's like the, there's some deals, right? There's some specials going on, and so it's not necessarily what you would think. But the 3D fills after the 4S. And I know that's disturbing, but I can't fix it for you. So for, we've got argon plus 4S2. 3D10 and 4P5. Okay. How about strontium? What's the noble gas before strontium? Krypton. So you, you look at the periodic table and you go up one level. Let's go back to the periodic table. So here's strontium. Where is it? There it is. Strontium. To find the noble gas that I'm going to use, I'm going to go up one row and all the way to the end, krypton. It always has to be a noble gas. You can't just pick, you can't pick rubidium because you think that would be easier. We have to use the noble gas. So it's krypton, <coughs> and then we're going to write the electron configuration for what's after that. Well, here's strontium in period five. This is the S block, and so those two squares represent two electrons in the 5S. Okay? So krypton, 5S2. Any questions? What would the full electron configuration for strontium be? I don't want to know, he says. It would be a hot mess. Let's do it. Look at the periodic table on the wall. The very top row of the periodic table only has two elements. That's the first row 
the first period, that corresponds to the first principal shell. So 1s and only two electrons fit in there. On the second row, the second period, there's two off by themselves, and then there's six over on the right. 2s, 2, and that block of 6 is the p subshell, 2p6. We go to the third row. There's 3s2 in that gap, and 3p6. And we come to the fourth row, 4s2. And then we get into those transition elements, 3d10. 3d10. Then we're back to 4 again, 4p6. And then we come to the fifth row. That's where strontium is, 5s2. Once you see it, it's awesome. It's all, it's all hiding up there. Any questions? Yes? That's a good question. On an exam, will I ask you to do the noble gas shorthand or do the full electron configuration? Yes, both of them. But since I give multiple choice exams, what will happen is you'll have four or five choices and you need to pick the correct one. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> There's only no, no. There won't be a shorthand and a longhand in the same question. They'll all be shorthand, or they'll all be full electron configuration. And there's there's one correct answer. Yeah. I love it when there's one correct answer. Okay, did that. There we go. Okay, so write an orbital diagram for argon. So orbital diagrams are the boxes with the arrows. Electron configurations are the letters and numbers. So orbital diagram for argon. Well, how many electrons does argon have? 18. What period of the periodic table is argon in? The third period, right? So I can predict by looking at its position in the periodic table that it's going to have up into the 3p uh, orbitals, right? So when I start drawing my boxes for my orbital diagram, I'm going to have to go all the way up to 3p. So we've got the 1s, and we've got the 2s. What comes after 2s? 2p. And there's 3 there. Because each box holds 2. After, three, after 2p comes 3s. And then 3p. Okay, so now we need to put 18 electrons in. They're going to fill up the lowest energy orbitals first in the hotel, the lowest uh, cost rooms, the cheapest rooms. And they're going to take their own orbital if they can. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, this guy wants his own bed. Six, number seven wants his own bed. Then they have to pair up. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And looking at argon, at the end of the row there, we expect it to have a full 3p subshell, and it does. Any questions? On the worksheet we're going to do in lab, um, making boxes in Word is a royal pain in the neck. So there the orbital diagrams are just lines, and you put the arrows in like that. So that might be confusing when you get to that, but just so you know. <laughs>